Suddenly, it's a riddle. Tiger, platypus, human. What do they all have in common? Hello, everyone. Don't you know the answer? Then you are very lucky to have just come across this video. It may not look like we have anything in common, but we all belong to the same big group. It's called the Therapsids. You may not have even heard of them, unless you are interested in paleontology, but most of this group disappeared from the face of the Earth more than 250 million years ago, at the end of the Permian period. But they were not completely wiped out. A handful of them managed to survive, and in fact became a successful group over time. Those are the species that still exist today, the mammals, to which we humans belong. Thus, we can say that the Therapsids are our ancestors. They are also called mammal-like reptiles, or arachnids. Oh, they look kind of strong. While this strange creature really did look a lot like a reptile in many respects, we can also see some mammalian characteristics. Also, do not confuse it with a dinosaur. There is absolutely nothing in common between Therapsids and dinosaurs. Then, what exactly were these strange creatures like? What did they look like? Where did they disappear to? Let's explore them together now. Appearance and Characteristics The Therapsids are a very large group, and it is difficult to find a kinship at first sight because they differ greatly in appearance. There are, however, some commonalities, mainly the variety of their teeth. Almost no one has ever looked into the mouth of an alligator, but if you look at a picture of one smiling, with its mouth wide open, you will see that all the fangs are the same in both shape and size. This is true for other reptiles as well, but the teeth of Therapsids are different. With the canines, incisors and molars, each serving a different function. In addition, the Therapsids learn to walk in a different way. The limbs are connected under the body, unlike those of crocodiles for example, which are connected horizontally. Other important Therapsid features are the body hairs that cover their bodies. We do not know when they began to grow hair because they saw it as a promising sign, but we can say with certainty that from the beginning they had smooth fur and no scales. Other than that, most of the Therapsids had whiskers like cats. Would you want such a creature as a pet? Did the Therapsids also purr? Interesting. There is one last characteristic. They started breastfeeding their own children. They could not bear children from their bellies, but instead laid eggs, covered with leather. The platypus, for example, still does. Therapsids may have had special pouches like kangaroos in which they carried their eggs, but this is still a hypothesis. Now, if they had body hair, teeth of various shapes and sizes, and breastfed their young, what else is missing? Yes, body temperature. Reptiles have no function to regulate their body temperature at all. It changes according to their surroundings. Therapsids thought, that's not good, and made up their minds to become warm-blooded animals. This was a very good decision. Their metabolism improved, and their feet no longer got cold at night. Those are the characteristics that show the link between Therapsids and mammals. Now let us look at the characteristics that made the Therapsids unique. A variety of Therapsids Paleontologists tend to get very passionate about classification, and the how to classify animals debate often rages. In addition to the usual classifications, such as orders and families, there are also phylogenetic groups. This includes all descendants that have branched off from a common ancestor. Following this, the Therapsids are divided into three main phylogenetic groups. Dinocephalians, the Anomodonts, and the Theriodonts. Spoiler alert, only the theropods end up with a happy ending, but I'll talk about them in order. Let's talk about Dinocephalian. This was a huge animal, reaching 6 meters in length and, shall we say, quite plump. And above all, it reminds us of a modern, easygoing hippopotamus. 
Dinocephalians also like to soak in the swamps and slowly chew on rotting tree trunks and scouring rushes. Dinocephalines are also called fearsome headed in Chinese characters. But why do you think they are? Because they have a thickened cranium with horns and other protrusions that decorate it. Estimena suckers, for example, had a crown like object. It also had cheekbones and protrusions above the eyes, but why these were necessary is not fully understood. There are theories that they were for regulating body temperature, or that they used these to push against each other to determine who was the bravest in the herd. This group also included primitive predators, which lived in the grass near the water and hunted by swooping from the bushes. In a nutshell, all the conditions for dinocephalians to thrive were in place. And by the early Permian, they expanded their habitat to almost the entire area of the then supercontinent of Pangaea. But by the end of the mid Permian, they became almost extinct. The next to step onto the center stage is the Anomodonts. A therapsid clade, the Anomodonts appeared in the middle Permian and persisted for quite some time, living until the age of the dinosaurs. They ranged from very small to quite large. For example, the species Summonia was about 30 centimeters long and somewhat ape-like in appearance. Because of its limb structure, it is thought that it could actually climb trees with the skill of a primate. On the other hand, the 2 meter long semi-desert dwelling Lystrosaurus was able to dig out plant roots with its long canine teeth to obtain food. Another interesting anomodont creature is Placerius. While not having canine teeth, they had huge fangs. Placerius weighed 1 ton and could grow up to 3.5 meters in length. They had strong legs and round bodies. They also like to work in groups, just like mammoths. Unfortunately, like the mammoth, they met an unfortunate fate. Anomodonts were unable to adapt to their environment and eventually became extinct. Now, the Theriodonts. This clade includes three groups. The Gorgonopsids, the Therocephalians, and the Cynodonts. Don't miss these last remaining animals. They have a big surprise for you. First up are the Gorgonopsids. Don't confuse them with the demonic Demogorgon from the drama Stranger Things. However, they have many things in common. For example, both are dangerous. The most famous species of the Gorgonopsids is probably the Anostransivia. This fearsome predator has a huge body and a large mouth with sharp, long fangs. The same fangs were possessed by the saber-toothed tiger millions of years later. A more diverse group is the Therocephalians. Some of them were small predators that ate insects, but other were larger and even herbivorous. And some of them had glands in their mouth that produced venom. So, one bite was the end of the line for their victims. But even these Therocephalians could not overcome the competition for survival with other Therapsids. They were Cynodonts. Then it is time to meet our ancestors. It was the Cynodonts who were the survivors of all the Therapsid and evolved into mammals. Which of these species became our ancestors remains unclear, but it is certain that one of the Cynodonts is our ancestor. So, what kind of creature was the surviving tough guy? Are they strong and fearsome? Not really. Despite their size, the Cynodonts prefer to hide in their nests in the face of danger. Of course, they only hunt at night. This cowardly strategy helped them to escape from those aggressive new predators. It was the dinosaurs who became the real kings of nature. These nocturnal behaviors were descended from Cynodonts and were also adapted by the first mammals, which evolved further. But the golden age of the Therapsids was coming to an end. The prosperity of this group came to an end with the great extinction at the end of the Permian. It was one of the most rapid and largest in history. What caused it is not known for sure. The Siberian Traps, a huge mass of lava that spilled over an area of about 2 million square kilometers, may hold the key. Or, a giant meteorite may have struck the Earth, as it did during the age of the dinosaurs. Thank you all for your patience. This is the end of the story. Thank you for watching this far. As you have seen, all's well that ends well. So, as a result, we were born into this world. Therefore, we should be grateful to our ancestors, the Therapsids. 
because they were able to protect our species through difficult times. With that, I bid you a fond farewell. See you again next time, proud descendants of the Theropsids. Farewell.